I was recently made aware of a necromancy mod for Oblivion that I'd never heard of before. The mod is called Moriasis. Completing the quest line will make you the ruler of an undead city and give you spells to create black soul gems and skeleton minions. I don't want to spoil the mod storyline, which has been very nicely crafted by the mod author. And you can see here in the video footage I've put up here, a few short snippets of some of the amazing environments the modder has created. If you do want to skip the story though, and just get all the abilities about putting any work in, there's instructions for that in the mod's readme file. I'd recommend you do it properly though. It's not overly time consuming and it's worth experiencing. However, pay attention to one thing. Make sure you do all the quests this mod offers. The first time I tried it, I skipped finding some skills in Zamulet, and it bugged out the quest for me later on. So just make sure that you complete everything so it doesn't bug out. What I will do though is spoil the rewards of this mod because I need to let you know about the minion mechanics and also give the mod a score. So if you want to experience the mod without knowing about the rewards, I tune out now. The first reward you get is a spell to reanimate a dead horse and make an undead horse mount. It's nice if you use mounts, but I prefer to walk everywhere though so I haven't made extensive use of it. The horse does seem pretty fast though. Later on, you'll get the spell to reanimate a nearby weapon. It's a cool spell, but the problem with it is that it only lasts a stupidly small amount of time, like 10 seconds or something. And because of this, it's not a great spell. If this minion was permanent, it'd be a very good helper in combat though. When you finish the storyline of this mod, you become the Lord of the Dead City of Moriasis. What you get is access to the Lord's Chamber, which has a nice bed for you to sleep in, a very comfy stone tablet. It also has a throne for you to sit in, as well as some nice master grade alchemy utilities like a master retort and stuff like that. More importantly though, you can read a book that teaches you some neat spells. The first spell allows you to convert a grand soul gem into a black soul gem. It also gives you an improved soul trap spell, which you can cast on enemy humanoids to trap their souls when they die. These trapped souls fill the soul gem, of course, which is important for the next and most important spell, Bind Skeleton. This spell allows you to create a skeleton minion with the black soul gem and a bunch of bones. The cool thing about these minions is that they use the meshes and animations of regular Oblivion NPCs. This makes them run and fight much faster and more fluidly than the standard Oblivion skeletons can. It also makes it possible for them to wear armor and for you to equip these skeletons with any equipment that you wish. When you create a skeleton for the first time, you're prompted on whether you want your minions to be hostile to the general populace, or whether they're going to be passive. If you choose no, then your minions will be able to accompany you in cities and stuff like that. This is quite nice for necromancers that want to coexist peacefully with the world, because your minions will be able to follow you into cities without attacking everyone. When creating a skeleton, you can choose whether it should be a warrior, an archer, or a mage. The skeletons and archers are what you'd expect, and they fight with a finesse not found among normal skeletons, thanks to them using humanoid meshes and animations. The skeleton mage has a bunch of interesting spells, but seems to focus mostly on conjuration, and will often summon up his own minions to help you, and you'll also conjure up armor and weapons to fight with. The strength of the minions, as well as how many minions you can summon, is the result of a lot of factors. The maximum number of minions a player can sustain is determined by a formula combining his conjuration, willpower, intelligence, and luck. The absolute maximum number of minions that any player can sustain is 10. For my level 8 character with about 50-ish conjuration, and intelligence and willpower somewhere between 60 and 70, and the luck of 50, I was able to conjure two level 5 skeletons. Minions levels are determined by a multiplier that is determined by the player's conjuration, intelligence, willpower, and luck. This percentage modifier is multiplied by the player's level to determine the minion's level when summoned. In other words, more powerful necromancers can summon minions up to and including their own level. So there's a lot of room for my level 8 character to grow and get much more powerful minions, and also a lot more of them than I have now. But I know a few things already. Firstly, minions are expensive. 
You can purchase Black Soul Gems from the Mage Merchant in Moriasis, and they'll cost you somewhere between the 700 septum mark and 800 septums. This isn't hideously expensive for a good minion, but I've got to say these level 5 minions leave a lot to be desired. And I can't imagine they'd be that much better at level 10 or 15 either. They can't be repaired once destroyed, so if they kill themselves by charging headlong into traps or falling off a cliff, or even by simply being lousy in combat, then you're looking at a lot of money. Frankly, at level 8, they're far too expensive to be a worthwhile investment. If you're a high level character with money to burn, it probably won't be a problem for you. But even then you'll still have to be going through the bother of corrupting a grand soul gem into a black soul gem, then trapping a soul and making the minion. So there's layers of effort involved, and these minions are a tad bit on the expensive side in my opinion. They're simply a bit too much of an investment to be considered expendable. You can heal damaged minions of bones, but the dead ones can't be revived. So if they manage to get themselves killed, then you'll have to spend another black soul gem. So if the minions are too expensive to be considered expendable, then they should be competent in combat, right? Well, at least at lower levels, the minions are lackluster in combat. They do okay, but they're nowhere near a force to be reckoned with. On the plus side though, they've got a very good command menu. There's all kinds of commands like wait, follow, set up current location as base, return to base, etc. So they can be considered more intelligent than the usual minion. They honestly remind me a lot of the companions from the MCM Companions mod that you could find in taverns and employ. So if you've played that mod, then you can draw a lot of comparisons between those companions and these Moriasis minions. My final comment is about the minion cap. You're going to have low numbers of skeletons for a long time, and that max level, presumably with absurdly high stats and maxed out conjuration, you might be able to get 10 skeletons. Well, 10 is a small crew, and it's not suitable for the conquest of Tamriel. So if you're looking to occupy cities of undead hordes, this mod probably isn't for you. So why would you choose this mod over something like Mysterious Bear's Epic Necromancy, which has limitless minions, and also minions that are a lot stronger and cheaper to build and maintain? Well, I'd say this mod is better for the necromancer who wants to peacefully coexist with Tamriel and take their undead on quests peacefully through town. I know for a fact that this is actually what some necromancers are looking for too, because on my uh, Mysterious Bear's Epic Necromancy mod video, some people left comments that they actually didn't like the mod because of the fact that all the minions were hostile to everything and they weren't able to walk through town with their minions. If you want high quality minions that are capable of following you around in town, taking complex orders and sneaking when you do, then these Moriasis minions seem to be superior, at least in this respect. If you're happy with a small crew, then this is great. The other advantage of course is that you can dress up these minions so they can be presumably quite powerful with all kinds of expansive enchanted gear and stuff like that. For me though, I feel a bit bummed out by the highly priced and comparatively weak as well as numerically deficient minions. It's a great mod, so I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. It loses points for the low minion count and for the rather lackluster minion strength and also for the lack of cost effectiveness with the minions. But this mod will make many people in the Oblivion very happy, and it will provide high quality minions to the more peaceful necromancers among us. I'd like to talk briefly about Moriasis' compatibility with Mysterious Bear's Epic Necromancy mod, because most people who care about necromancy will probably want to use both. Moriasis is technically compatible with Mysterious Bear's mod, and there'll be no bugs or crashes when using the mods together, but sadly the minions from each mod are not compatible with each other. The undead from Mysterious Bears mod will attack the Moriasis undead on sight, and the Moriasis minions will not retaliate. You will also not be able to have your necrotic lair within the city of Moriasis. The guards of Moriasis will see the undead from Mysterious Bears mod as enemies and attack them, and you have a civil war in your base. I tried to dress my Moriasis minions in necromancer robes, in the hope that this would cause them to join the necromancer faction, like it does for the player, 
but sadly that didn't work. You could probably make it work by modifying the mod, or using the console to make all the Moriasis inhabitants and summon minions join the Necromancer faction. The mods do have some nice synergy though, because the carving knife from Mysterious Bears mod can be used to harvest burns, so you can create Moriasis minions more easily that way. Without the knife, you'd always have to go back to Moriasis and find burns there. The other nice thing is that because the Moriasis minions can enter towns with you, they're much better for doing quests with and stuff like that. You could keep the stronger and more plentiful minions from Mysterious Bears mod for raiding dungeons or taking over the world with, while making use of Moriasis minions for anything that requires a delicate touch. You just have to remember to never let your savage hordes from Epic Necromancy see your poor Moriasis minions, otherwise they'll certainly be a bloodbath. One final thing I'd like to say about the Moriasis mod is that at the end of the questline, there's a very special artifact that will be sitting on the throne. Now, you can choose to weaken yourself dramatically by picking it up. It will reduce all your stats, except for intelligence and um, willpower, to absolutely abysmal levels, like I had something like 9 strength and could only carry 40 pounds worth of weight. But I did get a sizable mana bonus. I think it was either 50 points or 100 points, something like that. And it also significantly raised my intelligence and willpower. But to be honest, I think it's too high of a price. You're basically completely crippled with only 9 strength or whatever the hell it is. It's just too much of a price to pay in my opinion. But if you're the kind of necromancer that just likes to run around naked, not carrying anything at all, then maybe you could benefit from this.